Hello and welcome to Potions, how do they work and everything that you don't know about them. This hopefully will be the first formal deep dive into mechanics in Diablo 2 so that we can be prepared for when Diablo 2 Remastered comes out. This will add to a catalog of useful resources that people have available to them when they're trying to master a game that they might be coming back to after a long time or coming to, to the game for their first time ever, which is really exciting. If you like the content, if you like the video, please consider subscribing below. We are so close to the thousand sub mark. I think we need something like 15 or 20 people to go ahead and click that button. Uh, it would help me out entirely. It would be fantastic and I would really appreciate it. If you have any comments or suggestions for videos of this kind that you would like to see in the future for information that isn't necessarily very easy to find on how Diablo 2 works, please let me know below. I would really appreciate that and that would help to shape the types of things that I end up going into. Thank you very much and I look forward to seeing you at the end of the video. If you go look at potions, and I have one of every potion here, you'll see that minor potion heals 30 hit points, light healing heals 60, regular healing heals 100, 180, and then 320. And then for mana potions, they restore 40 mana, 80 mana, 160 mana, 300 mana, and then 500 mana. Here's the Barbarian. A minor healing potion on the Barbarian heals 60, and a super healing potion heals 640. A minor mana potion gives you 20 mana, and a super mana potion only gives you 250. So, what did we just find out? The Barbarian heals more for health potions, and regenerates less mana for mana potions. There are three subdivisions of the classes when it comes to potions. There is the Barbarian, then there is Paladin, Amazon, Assassin, all in one group, and then there is Necromancer, Druid, and Sorceress all in their own group. So if you look here, right, a minor healing potion for the Barbarian heals 60, for Amazon, Paladin, Assassin heals 45, and for the Druid, Sorceress, Necromancer it heals 30. And that's across the board. These three subdivisions exist in the classes. Now the same thing is true for mana potions. So there is the Barbarian who gets the least amount of mana, then there is Amazon, Paladin, and Assassin who get the second least amount of mana, and then Necromancer, Sorceress, and Druid all receive the largest amount of mana. And that goes all the way down on potions. Um, the second thing, the really important thing to notice here, is how does a potion regenerate your life? What does 60 mean in this context? Each healing potion has a different set amount of time that it acts over. So your smallest potions take 7.68 or the second longest time to heal you for their full amount. So from the moment that you take a minor potion to the point where it has healed the full amount that it would give you, it takes 7.68 seconds. There are no breakpoints for this. This is just literally a clock ticking forward. You'll see that. Why does Act 2 potions feel so much better than Act 1 potions? Well, Act 2 potions give you double the amount of health that you would get and also double the amount of mana that you would get, but also do it in a shorter amount of time. Then, as the game progresses, the amount of time that it takes does increase from this point, so you'll see 6.84 seconds, 7.68 seconds, and then 10.24 seconds. But the amount that you're healing is also pretty drastically increasing, although it no longer doubles. The interesting thing to note is that for mana potions, uh, you do continue to get doubling up until the base mana potion. It always takes a flat 5.12 seconds. Okay, pretty cool. I feel like you could probably walk out into this world and be like, oh, okay, that's why the sorceress can teleport for so long off of the potions that she uses when she's teleporting through Act 5 and stuff like that in the speedrun. And also why people like the druid and the necromancer feel like such wet paper towels whenever they take a hit. Because when you take a hit and then start using your potion, you're getting the least amount possible from a healing potion, and it takes a while. So that's that's all like base level. You can probably just take that information and, and go run with it. 
until you really go pay attention, you never look at these values. And I think a lot of people tend to play with just like, if I use a tier five potion, a super healing potion, I know I'm going to regen in this amount of time. And it's more of a feeling than a conscious number. But things like this are really important to understand when you're dealing with stuff like trying to make pacifist work or trying to minimize your potion use while you're speed running, right? This is knowing these numbers can really help. Like, hey, from the moment I take this potion, I have 10 seconds where I'm going to be regening. Well, Mac, how does the calculation work? Luckily, the calculation is actually really basic. If you're the Barbarian and you're going to take a minor healing potion, your calculation is 60, and I'll call them hit points, you don't really need this right here, divided by 7.68 seconds. All right? Take out your handy dandy calculator because I can't do that division in my head. Take out your handy dandy calculator and you get 60 divided by 7.68. So, you're healing 7.81 hit points per second. Easy. Easy game. What if you take two potions? What if you take different potions? Interesting, huh? What happens there? So, if you drink two or more potions in a row, the total point fill is averaged over the total time. What happens when you drink more than one potion? Well, if you drink two potions in a row, the total point fill is averaged over the total time. If you're taking the same potion, that doesn't matter. You maintain your health points per second, and you have just told it, hey, refill for this many seconds. That's not always a good thing. If you at any point stop regenerating, meaning you hit your maximum hit point total, the rest of the potion wears off. It doesn't like stay in the background and if you keep taking damage keep going the only way that works is if you are continuously at less than your total amount of hit points so if you're taking a lot of poison damage and getting hit by stuff you could drink four or five potions to maintain that health regenerated per second of your potion for that amount of time it may still not totally offset the amount of damage that you're taking but if at any point you hit your maximum you have wasted the rest of the potion. This is incredibly important in something like the Sorceress speedrun. So Act 5 Sorceress needs to teleport basically from Haragath to the, to the Ancients, and then from there to Worldstone Keep. So you never want to have to go back to buy more potions, right? You'll see from the first time that somebody teleports, and I can you know, highlight this here, I can give you an example of it. So you'll see that from the moment I start teleporting when I walk out the door, I will start losing mana, right? That makes sense, I'm teleporting. And if I start using a potion now, I'm actually regaining mana, right? But, You'll notice I hit my maximum and then I start losing mana again, but I didn't use a full super potion, right? If I start from really low and then I use my potion, you'll see that my orb has gone like faded in blue. But just there at the end, you'll notice that I actually ran out of mana before I hit my maximum. I had used all the mana that I was regenerating throughout the entirety of that time. Uh, being able to stack potions and hitting this breakpoint between how much your skill costs versus how quickly you're using that skill and how much mana you're using means you can get more value out of each potion that you use. The problem comes down when you use different types of potions. So right here, if I drink two or more potions, the total is average, we got that. Drinking different potions at the same time will give you the total value of those potions over the total time. And since each potion has a different timestamp, it's really important to understand just how detrimental this is. So in our example with the Barbarian, using a minor potion nets us 7.81 health regen per second. Using a super potion nets us 63.08 health per second. Using one of each, 
reduces our regen per second down to 39.06. So, basically saying, mixing of potions brings down your total altogether. You still get the total amount of health that those potions would heal you over time, but you are increasing the amount of time per by including additional types of potions. So, you never really want to mix them if you can avoid that. For mana potions, the math is a little bit easier because they all have the same time signature, but they do give different amounts. So the same applies for mana potions as well. Something you might not know about potions is that you can crit on a potion. That's right. Statistics say, with the amount of vitality that I just had, I just crit on somewhere between three to four potions. What do you mean crit on a potion? What, like literally, what does that mean? Well, you can have a double fill on your potion. Your potion can double the value that it would have regenerated to you over the same amount of time. Now, as Teo just pointed out, it can also be a problem. Uh, and, and I'll get into why it can be a problem as well. There is a very weird calculation that the game uses to determine whether or not you just crit. And it is take an energy between zero and your vitality or energy, depending on what type of potion you're using, vitality for health, energy for mana, subtract one, then take a second integer. That second integer just goes between zero and 99. And if the first integer that you selected is bigger than your second integer, you crit. Congratulations, you are now going to gain double the health or double the mana from the potion that you just used. It gets a bit more in-depth than that. It depends on whether or not your value is odd or even, and then it goes through this very quick function. It basically breaks down to take your relevant stat, divide that by four, and that's your percentage chance of getting a double potion fill or a critical potion use. This does have diminishing returns. So after 200, either 200 vitality or 200 energy, you will start to see diminishing returns for each milestone that you hit. Uh, I say milestone, they basically just calculate it in 20 because every 20 stat points is roughly 5% increase. But you'll see between 200, where you have basically a 50% chance, you know, 49.5, and 220, you're down to 54.1 which is less than a 5% increase, right? This is a 4.6% uh, a increase. And then each time you'll get less and less out of it, but it's still a, a noticeable increase. So basically the more energy you have or the more vitality that you have, the higher the likelihood that you will crit on a potion. Why is critting on a potion so good? Well, critting on a potion means that you will have more resources more quickly. But when do you not want to crit on your potion? Let's go back to the example I was just talking about, where you're on the sorceress, and you are teleporting through the entirety of Act 5 trying to get to Bale. Let's go back to that example. So I'm on the sorceress, and I'm trying to get all the way up to Bale on a single inventory worth of potions. Well, Mac... Don't you want to... Don't you want to get crits on your potions so that you have more mana? Remember, we just talked about the fact that if your mana were to fully refill, the rest of the potion that was going to get you there is now gone. You've wasted that part of your potion. So if I'm teleporting and I'm using potions and it's regenerating while I'm going, if I ever hit my maximum, that potion is gone, and now I'm running out of mana again, which means I have to use another potion. If I don't use up all of the mana from that potion while teleporting, I will start to lose mana again, and then I will have to use another potion. Since the equation for a potion is the amount that it regenerates over a set amount of time, if I were to double that rate, I will more often than not hit my maximum mana and then waste the additional seconds where I normally would be regenerating. On a sorceress, this potion will regenerate 500 mana over a 5.12 second time period. This is giving me back 
we'll just take that number. 97.64 mana per second. If I were to double this, I'm now gaining 195 mana per second. So if we go back and we look at my sorceress right now, my sorceress only has 700 mana total. Let's say I did nothing. I was just at zero mana. A normal potion would not fully rejuvenate me all the way up to uh, my maximum. So I could actually take two potions and be casting spells during this time because it's only going to give me a total of 500. But the super mana potion with the crit is going to give me 1000 mana. It's basically giving me 200 mana per second. So in four seconds, I will be at my maximum. In fact, I will have inefficiently gotten to my maximum, right? That'll actually bring me up closer to 800 mana. And then the rest of the potion goes away. I've lost 1.12 seconds of mana regen because the potion crit instead of me being able to use that mana while it's regenerating. And that's why a crit can be really annoying on the sorceress because you will end up having to use more mana potions. Can I please just use one sentence instead of five? Yes. Potion economy in Diablo 2 means that you always want to get the maximum value out of each potion without ever losing any due to hitting your maximum total before the potion would run out. There we go. One sentence. Teo, this is my classroom. All right. I'll explain it how I want to explain it. All right. So that's really important to know. So Jim Bob asked a great question. Is there any way to know that your potion has crit, that you've gotten a double potion? And the answer is no. Uh, if you are in fine tune with your character and how potions typically act, you will notice that you are regening at twice the speed. But obviously that's something that you may not be paying attention to in the moment, but it's something that you can definitely see. Now what's interesting is that by stacking potions, you're running a bit of a gambit. Every time you use a potion, you add that much time to your total regen. And as long as it's the same type of potion, you don't change your average. But critting will take that value and add it to whatever is remaining to calculate. So you will bring down the average regen per second of a crit potion by using another potion. But keep in mind that if your globe fills all the way, you're going to lose everything that you've stacked as far as potion queue. It's not really a queue, it's a, it's a it's a total cumulative time, but using a smaller potion when you crit would also bring would drastically bring down the average, so you're not wasting as much potentially, but that is a level of gameplay and nuance that I don't know if anybody consciously considers that, but realistically is not something you could make in the heat of the moment as an action or reaction. It's cumulative time. Can you please ban yourself? I'll see you. I'll see you outside after class, mister. <laughs> what else do you need to know? Well, the ability to get a double fill from a potion only works on health and mana potions. It doesn't work on rejuvenation potions. A 35% minor rejuve potion will always give you 35% of your total, and a 100% potion always gives you back 100%. You are basically never getting 100% value out of a rejuve potion because you can never be at zero life and use a rejuve. You can be at zero mana, but you'll never be at zero life. So a rejuve potion, 100% rejuve potion is actually lying because you never get 100% of the value out of it, although that's being a steckler. Uh, and then for other potions, obviously antidote, stamina, and thong potions all have set time frame values that they occur over in instantaneous effects. So these don't crit either, but they will immediately remove all poison effects. They will immediately remove all chill effects and they'll immediately maximize your stamina bar and then give you an added bonus. So 30 seconds of uh, plus 50 poison res, 30 seconds of plus 50 cold res, and 30 seconds of infinite stamina. These all stack. So using five poison potions will only cure your poison once, but it will give you five times 30. It will give you two and a half minutes worth of plus 50 poison res. Stamina potions will give you 
5 times 30 seconds worth of infinite stamina, and then thawing potions will give you 5 times 30 or 2.5 minutes of plus 50 cold res. Fun fact! How many other types of potions are there in the game? Well, there are the exploding potions and the poison potions. The other cool thing is that there are two other potions in the game. You can't, well, you can drink one of these potions. You can't drink the other potion though, which is pretty sad. Obviously these are the quest potions. There is the potion of life that you make from the ashes of Kuile, given to you in act three after returning the golden bird statue. And then the potion of thawing, right? Which goes over to Anya, which I think is actually pretty cool. It's a thawing potion, except it's a special thawing potion because she's covered in more ice than you. 